Hey, this is Doug from Fall Scale Models, and in this video we're going to show you how to weather a brick hydrocal wall. Uh, hydrocal is a lot like plaster, but it's, it holds uh, detail better and it's a lot stronger. Uh, right here is where we cast most of our hydrocal uh, and let it dry on these racks before it gets packaged up. Uh, but we're going to head over to the workbench and we're going to use some acrylic paints, some enamel paints, and some weathering powder. And you'll find that it's not as uh, intimidating as it might seem to, to paint brickwork. So this is Hydrocal, and it's a very uh, nice plaster. It holds detail really well. It's uh, much stronger than plaster. Um, and this is uh, HO scale brick wall. And to paint brick, you can of course spray paint it with primer, uh, but that gives you a kind of a flat look. We're gonna paint it with these four different colors. And this is a, a mix of different brands. This is Folk Art. Uh, this is a pumpkin color. It's a pretty bright orange. Uh, and this is a Craftsmart uh, paint. I think this is from Walmart. And this is terracotta. So it's kind of like a clayish orange. Another folk art. This is light red oxide. You see that color there. And this is a bit of a darker one. This is folk art. And this is Tuscan red. Much darker. And what we're going to do is apply these but diluted with water and we're going to start from light to dark so I'm going to start with this is this is the bright orange this is the pumpkin color and if you have a piece of scrap plaster it would be better to start on a scrap uh, you can always pour a little slab and just to see if you're diluting it enough because we're kind of using it like a stain uh, we want some of the white to show through at the moment and then just build it up with different layers. So right now that looks kind of crazy, that's orange, but it will look better. Uh, you definitely don't want to start dark to light. Uh, it's much harder to get the uh, color back once it's too dark. That's why we're starting with this kind of light color here. And use a big flat wide brush. If you get too much color on there, you can always just get some water in there, dilute it. I mean, if you want a clean look, then you can certainly um, spray paint it with a red primer and have one even brick color. But generally, brick doesn't look that way, especially in the kind of scenes that we're modeling that are uh, a little bit old and weathered. So we also don't have to be too neat about it. So now I'm going into my next color. And if this water bleeds in, that's okay. Don't forget those edges. Now I'm on to my third color. And I'm actually, by this color, I'm not trying to cover the whole wall. I mean, I wanted a little evenly as far as the thickness, but I don't want the color to be even. So it's a little blotchy, which is good. Now on to my fourth color. This is the darkest color. Now at this point, if it's a little streaky like this, take off all the wet areas of the paint. This actually makes it blend in a little better. And 
Now you'll see that you start to pick up some white areas. That's the paint completely taken away, but that's fine. We can go back and I'm taking my second color and this will just kind of blend it in further. Now I'm just doing little spot areas, random areas with my third color. And I'm going to go back with my paper towel. And back to the fourth color. Now I'm going to take a stain. This is a wash. This is driftwood from Hunter Line. And this kind of brings them all to all the colors together. And if there's any other white areas or light areas, this will tone all that down. You don't have to blot the alcohol, but if you want it to dry a little bit faster, you can just give it a blot. And what's nice about the water mixed with acrylic paint is that you can keep going into this a few times as the plaster is just absorbing the color. So it's kind of hard to make it too dark if you have it diluted. So that's basically our base brick wall. We need to do some more work with individual bricks. Okay, now what we want to do is take a very small brush. Uh, you can see how tiny this brush is compared to the brick. Uh, let's paint individual bricks. Uh, most of the time, brick is not all the same color. There's different shades of uh, the clay they use. It goes from gray to black to tan to even pink um, and everything in between. And so one of the ways to do that uh, the easy way to find those colors is in a great set from AK Interactive. Uh, this is flesh and skin colors. This is actually used for figure painting, um, but it's got a good assortment of colors just for brickwork. There's a light flesh, highlight flesh, shadow flesh, and so on, and they just happen to be uh, a nice range for uh, our brick wall. Uh, in addition to that, we also want a dark gray, so I just picked a dark gray from my uh, craft acrylics. This happens to be a Martha Stewart paint, and this is Arrowhead. Um, just a dark gray. Any gray will do. Um, any kind of craft acrylic. And by the way, uh, old storage CDs, if you're not using them, don't throw them out. They make great paint palettes. So just start with any color. We'll start with the light one. And you don't need to do that many of these, just to give the appearance of some variety of brick. If you um, need an optivizer to see them, use an optivizer or a pair of reader glasses works. That's what I'm doing. And just work your way around the wall. Uh, what you don't want is sort of a repeat pattern. Don't make like a grid. Jump around a lot, kind of far and wide across the piece. And you can also use more of one color than the other. Maybe there's only a few dark gray ones. Maybe there's only a few red ones.
you know, right here, I've got some paint on the brick on top of that brick, so I'm just going to make that another one as well. So it's pretty forgiving if you make a mistake or you're a little sloppy, just paint the brick around it as well. And this is just a first pass. If you think you need more, when we get through to the other colors, so I'm going to my next color here. You can always go back and add. Basically what we're doing, um, if you want to think about a philosophy of how to paint this, and this goes, this goes for all modeling and scenery especially. It's uh, layering, right? Just like nature and uh, the world around us. Everything is made because of something that came after it. Like um, you've got a concrete wall, but there's some green at the bottom. And the green is probably from algae or it's from mud. And there's brown. And then there's streaks on top of that. So we're doing the same thing here. Okay, I've gone back and added uh, some other colors to the palette here. And these are the original colors from the wash of the brick wall. This is my light orange that we started with earlier. And I just want to see if that works as far as bringing the, the layer that I made of the individual bricks uh, join the back layer. Since they're the same family, but these aren't diluted with water. So kind of bridge the gap between the two colors sets. And right now it might look a little too um, much of a polka dot effect, but we're going to blend all this in later again with some more weathering. As you can see when I'm adding this particular color, for example, it's very similar to the background, except it's solid. It's not transparent like the wash. And it's subtle, but it makes a big difference. And what I think I'll do is take the wash and I'm gonna apply the wash over the entire wall. I'm just trying to keep everything blended together. All right now that looks a little too shiny because it's wet, but most of the alcohol in this wash will evaporate. You can always help it along too, with a little blotting. Now just a word about blotting, since this is hydrocal, don't press too hard because if you don't have a flat surface, if there's one little crumb under there, it will cause the wall to uh, snap. So it's getting closer to where we want it to be. Okay, now I'm going to try some uh, enamel washes, and these are also from AK Interactive. Um, these need to be diluted with mineral spirits or turpentine, whatever you have works well. Um, and they're going to give us a more of a variety and for weathering, not necessarily brick color, but actual weathering. Like this is moss. We might want some, some green algae on the bottom of the wall that splatters up uh, when it rains and it leaves the bottom of the wall wet. This is a dark brown. And this is another kind of dark green, dark streaking grime. 
I'm going to start with, um, I think, green. And I'm just dipping a little bit of it into the brush, of the brush into the paint, rather. And then into the mineral spirits. Kind of like we did with our first brick washes. We want a diluted kind of version. We don't want to be too dark. And if it doesn't appear at first, that's good. You don't want to go too heavy handed because it's hard to remove if it's too dark, of course. And if it is dark, like I'll put it on a little heavy without diluting it. It's a little too green there. We can go back into the wash and just let it sort of bleed into the bottom of the brick wall. And already it looks like a little bit more of what we'd see in nature where it's it's grounded. Uh, a lot of times models don't look good because they look like they're just sitting on top of the earth as opposed to being in the earth and interacting with the earth. There's always some kind of uh, reaction from something being close to the ground and all the weathering that gets done because of it. So now this is a more of a tan color but it's, it's dust and deposits. And basically what it is is a kind of a faded brown wash. And at this height of the brick wall, maybe it's from dust and dirt on the road or the street. But like all the other washes, it just starts to blend in. And a lot of times you're not gonna see a direct effect right away. I mean, it's very subtle. So if you looked at this from the beginning, you would notice it, but right now, it's, it's very, very subtle, which is what we want. And I'm just kind of putting it randomly. As you can see, I'm not painting the wall. And that's a big um, misunderstanding sometimes. We don't paint on weathering, we apply weathering. And applying means it's, it can be strategic in spots and, and all over the place. It's not painting. So now it's kind of spotty, we don't like that go into my turpentine and I can bleed it all back into the wall so it appears like one surface. And again, you can do some or all of these uh, applications. I'm gonna prop this wall up because it might be easier me to work on it so I'm going to do that. So now I'm going to go with an even darker color and this is where you definitely want to dilute. Now you see here at the bottom this dark color next to the green is, is nice because it's, it's a nice variety but we don't want to compete the two colors to compete with each other. So we're gonna have one predominant over the other. So I've got these two splotches here, but I've got most of my edge green. Maybe I'll hit one more here and that's it. Uh, and even if that's too dark, I can bleed this a little bit. But that's the kind of subtlety you want to make it look real. Uh, I have one more dark color here, but I think I think that's it. But we're gonna do a couple more things to it uh, with some chalk. So I've got my set of Bragdon weathering powders here. Um, this is a uh, 18 color set. You can see all the different shades, mostly rusts and browns and grays, uh, which is perfect for a brick wall. And the thing about chalk is to use as little as possible. Uh, you sort of think about uh, how um, a woman would apply makeup to her face. Too much makeup and you look like a clown. So you don't want your wall to look clownish or cartoonish. So when you put your brush in, say we're gonna use this, let's go with a dark, a little brown here. I already, I'm tapping off the chalk. It's kind of like dry brushing. You wanna use as little as possible. And I'm just looking for a little bit of application. And I wanna get rid of most of it, almost all of it. 
And that's kind of it. I'm gonna take it again, tap off most of it. At very light pressure. I'm not trying to write my name on this wall. And a lot of our weathering, all of it, almost all of it, really needs to appear faded in itself because you're looking at these buildings from a distance. If you're looking at a, a model on a layout, it's potentially 50 to 100 to 200 feet away. And when that happens, there's a, sort of a haze between you and the object or the building or whatever you're looking at. So it sort of puts a gauze over your, your you know, if you were a camera, you'd put a filter over your eyes to sort of get this faded look. To me, that's actually a little too much. I mean, it's not terrible, uh, but what I can do is take some of this red, kind of counter the dark color with it, because it's similar to more of the color that's already on the wall. I'm also blowing it away if I think it's too much. You know, one other um, color choice you can use on brick, and this goes for walls or chimneys, is a, a white or a light gray. Now what happens on brick walls is a, an effect called efflorescence. And that is when there's salt deposits in the brick, and when water gets to it, it kind of leaches out onto the wall and creates these kind of white streaks or little white areas. Again, very subtle. You might not even see it. Um, if you want to make a big deal out of it, you can on one wall. I wouldn't do it on every wall. So at some point, you're going to come to a stopping point when you feel you just like the way it looks, and that's pretty much where I'm at at the moment for weathering. I could keep going, but I don't, also don't want to obliterate what I've done. Uh, and I want my next building, my next brick building, to look a little different from this one. So if I change up what I do with each building, I'll get that difference between the buildings. Okay, so I've just thrown on a little bit of scenery and a couple of posters just to give the walls some more scale. Uh, of course, you can continue detailing this, uh, you know, as much as you want, depending on what you're building. Uh, but you could see how the brick color interacts with the say a little bit of scenery in the green moss and the black and if this were on a sidewalk uh, you would continue that effect uh, so it completely blends in.